I'm going to uh, talk about um, the most well-established scientific keys to longevity, to achieving longevity, and I'm going to start by uh, talking about um, what's in your genome and key controllable uh, potent factors in the real world. And this, this red background uh, is an Asian longevity symbol, and to me it's a little bit reminiscent of the brain, and it's, uh, it'll pop up from time to time during my talk, and it's a visual reminder of the single most important goal in preventive healthcare, and that is maximizing longevity of both body and mind. So in this goal, in pursuing this goal, diet is key. Um, dozens of studies over many decades have shown that diet is probably the single most important and controllable factor in our overall longevity. And here's sort of a big picture overview of, of the reason that diet is so important. In a single year, over 95% of you, of the material in your body, the atoms in your body, won't be there anymore. But you don't just sort of vanish or fade off into nothingness. There's this gradual process of replacement that happens over time where food replaces the the material in your body. And if you eat junk food, if you eat bad food, um, well, enough said. It, it, it destroys your health. And this process is under, gene, under the control of genes and under the control of the specific variants that each of you have. But not all of the genes that control this process are yours or are even human. Some of these genes are uh, in your gut uh, they're, they're part of the gut microbiome uh, that controls not only what goes on inside of your gut, but inside of your body. For example, they help you to, re to, to regulate your levels of blood sugar. I go into much more detail about a lot of these things. There's a lot of scientific references in my book, The Mindspan Diet. But a lot of people wonder what this word means. What does Mindspan mean? Well, a lot of people talk about uh, an ultimate measure of health as being lifespan. But lifespan isn't really the perfect measure of health because if we live the final years of our lives in severe and eventually uh, uh, permanent uh, cognitive decline where we're not aware of our lives, then we effectively have to subtract that time off of our lives. Mind span is the lifespan of the high performance mind. And here's how I began to pinpoint the genetic and the dietary factors that most influence mind span. I looked around the world for people who have the longest lives and the best cognitive performance later in their lives, and I compared those people to people who have much shorter lives and have much higher levels of cognitive decline later in life. The people circled in red, the areas and people circled in red, I call the mind span elite, and the areas circled in black I call the mind span risk. And unsurprisingly, the people with the best Longevity and, and mental performance later in life for Mediterraneans and the Japanese. And Japanese women uh, hold longevity records in virtually every category. Uh, they outlive Japanese men by uh, several years, and that holds worldwide. Women outlive men by a few years worldwide. The big difference between Japanese women and men, though, about half the difference is due to much heavier smoking by Japanese men. So when I'm introduced to people as a uh, longevity scientist and, and the author of the Mindspan Diet, people want to um, impress me with their knowledge of diet. They want to tell me about all the incredible stuff that they're doing and that they're right on the cutting edge of diet. So they, they tell me all these things. They say, I'm healthy, I exercise, and I, I eat low carb with some whole grains like quinoa, mostly paleo ancestral, and part of that is I eat very high protein you know, lots of grass-fed beef. Um, I avoid refined grains and starches, you know, like white rice, pasta, and bread. I don't drink alcohol. I don't, don't drink coffee or tea. I have, you know, fairly high HDL or LDL, but, but my HDL is very high, so I think that balances out, right? I'm, I'm okay. Or I take vitamins and I take mineral supplements. So, you know, I know that, um, you know, it probably doesn't do any harm. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm sufficient on all my key nutrients. So let's look at some of the key evidence, though, 
uh, that has to do with these claims, these beliefs, um, to determine whether or not people are doing the right thing. Because this isn't just a few people who come up with me with anecdotal stories. This is actually, these are pervasive messages that you'll see in a lot of places. Popular books and media feature these kinds of messages. So when you compare the diets of the mind span elite to the mind span risk, there are a few things that pop out immediately. And this is one of them. The mind span elite traditional diets feature a lot less red meat than uh, the mind span risk diets. A lot of people think that that might be um, saturated fat, that saturated fat might undermine people's health. But before you jump to the conclusion that it's saturated fat, there's actually stronger evidence about some other ingredient, and that's iron. If you look at the diets, the overall patterns of the diets of the MindSpan Elite versus the MindSpan Risk, and if you look at the blood iron markers of the MindSpan Elite, they have much lower iron, not only in their foods, but also in their bodies. Of course, iron is a really key ingredient. It's, a, it's, a really, it's an essential nutrient. But when you get above sufficiency, you don't get any benefits from that extra iron, and you actually increase the risk of many serious diseases like heart disease, cancer, and dementia, and you shorten life. So my number one recommendation to people who want to eat more healthfully is to keep your iron in the low but sufficient range. And you're probably going to have to undergo some specific blood tests to find out whether or not you're in that range. So getting deeper into genes and genomes, um, when we look at the genetic variants that are involved in overall longevity and extreme longevity, we see again the importance of iron in determining longevity. These are two well-known genes, HFE and APOE. They're involved in iron transport in the body. And about half of people have harmful or pathogenic variants in these two genes. And they can also form a very synergistic negative effect on your overall health and longevity. And here's how they work. So HFE is the primary determinant of how much iron gets taken up out of your food and transported into your body out of your gut. And the normal HFE, or the, the, uh, the common variant, it, it senses how much iron is in your body, and there's a, is a regulation of how much iron is imported into your body. You can still have too much iron with a normal HFE variant, but there are certain variants that undergo unregulated transport of iron into your body, and you can get very, very high and dangerous levels of iron accumulating in your body with these other variants. And about a quarter of the population has these variants. APOE is probably even more infamous among people, and the E4 variant is the single most common and harmful variant uh, in the human genome. It's the variant that, that provides a uh, an almost complete barrier to making it to uh, centenarianhood. So it's very similar to HFE in that it transports iron too, but instead of transporting iron into the, brain, into the body, it transports iron into the central nervous system, into, into the brain. And these two genes and the harmful variants in these genes can act synergistically because HFE Harmful variants transport too much iron into the body where, there are where that iron's available for transport into the central nervous system in the brain. I love food, we all love food, but this isn't my declaration of love for food. I I'm getting at a slightly different point here, and, and that is how much does our food love us? And is our food good for our hearts? And that's a really, really important question because cardiovascular disease is one of the biggest killer diseases. And most cardiovascular disease is determined by lifestyle and diet. And when I wrote my book, The Mindspan Diet, Japanese women, as they do in many other categories, have had the healthiest hearts ever measured. But earlier this year, Healthier hearts were discovered, just barely because the Japanese women have incredibly healthy hearts. And these incredibly healthy hearts and cardiovascular systems belong to people who live in the 
Amazon rainforest of Bolivia, the Chamane people. And the Chamane people are um, they're farmers, hunter-gatherers, and they live a true paleo existence, um, unlike the mythical or, or fictional paleo existences that we often hear about. <laughs> and if you compare their heart disease risk to the heart disease risk in the U.S., it's very, very different. In the moderate or high-risk category, 50% of people in the U.S. have a moderate or high risk of heart disease, whereas only 3% of the Chamani do. In the essentially no risk for heart disease category, 84% of the Chamani people have essentially no risk for heart disease, whereas only 14% in the U.S. do. Now, the Chamani diet is extremely different from the U.S. diet but it's very, very similar in some key respects to the traditional Japanese diet. So in comparing these two healthiest hearts in the world, we see that uh, carbohydrates make up the vast majority of the diets of these healthiest hearts. Traditionally, Japanese people have had closer to 80% of their food energy comes from carbohydrates, primarily white rice. And the Chamane today still get over 70% of their dietary energy from carbohydrates, primarily white rice and plantains. But the, the really striking thing about the Chamane is not just that they have dietary similarities, but the health outcomes that they have, in addition to their incredibly healthy hearts, are very, very unlike what we associated with high carbohydrate intake. They have very low levels of obesity. Japanese women have the lowest levels of obesity in the developed world. They have very low levels of type 2 diabetes. Both of them have increasing amounts of obesity and type 2 diabetes as they move toward a more Western dietary pattern. But here's one of the things that really surprises people. The Chamani and Japanese women are extremely iron deficient. People think that you, know, you need a lot of iron to be healthy. But probably one of the keys to their healthy hearts and cardiovascular systems is the very, very low levels of iron. About 50% of Japanese women are iron deficient. Over 50% of Chimane, middle-aged and older, are not only iron deficient, they're even more iron deficient. They're iron deficient anemic. They're actually clinically iron deficient. And here are some Chimane um, in a family group uh, enjoying their staple food, plantains. About half of the Chimane diet is plantains. And you can see that most of the plantains they have on the ground, what they're eating and that they're storing, are actually yellow plantains. That's the state that they eat them in, slightly green or a little bit yellow. And one of the reasons that they eat so many plantains is because they're so easy to cook and eat, and they're so flavorful. This is how they prepare them. They just put them in the fire with the peel on, and when they're cooked, they just peel them and eat them. Couldn't be easier. And this is over two-thirds of the Chimane diet, plantains and white rice. About half of the diet is plantains, about another 20% is white rice. And when you have a carbohydrate-rich diet like that, it profoundly changes your physiology, profoundly changes your microbiome. And one of the things that we find in the MindSpan Elite microbiomes is that they're enriched with a greater diversity and quantity of carbohydrate-loving micro microbes. And the, the really important thing to know about carbohydrate diets is that, that that's the only way you can feed your microbiome. They don't really eat anything else. But then we consider well, I mean, we eat very similarly. We have a lot of the same foods. Mindspan elite eat a lot of white rice. The Japanese eat a lot of white rice. We eat white rice. We eat pasta. We eat bread. The problem is that our white rice and our bread and our pasta are not the same as the Mindspan elite white rice, bread, and pasta. The difference is that the Mindspan risk, like in the U.S., and the other mind span risk areas of the world, enrich their rice and their wheat, bread, pasta with iron. 
The mind span elite have never enriched any of their carbohydrates with iron. So when we go back to these beliefs about what people are doing for their overall health and longevity, is it, is it an anti-longevity diet? I don't know, but it certainly is diametrically opposed to the proven longevity diets of the world. The Mediterraneans and Japanese eat very high carbohydrate diets, very little whole grains, mostly refined grains, like white rice. They eat very low protein, very low animal protein in particular. They drink a, a moderate to fairer amount of alcohol. They drink coffee, tea. Coffee and tea are on the, they're the part of the mind span formula everywhere. And this LDL, HDL thing is kind of confusing, but every attempt to artificially raise HDL in genetic variants, with dietary supplements, with drugs, does not reduce cardiovascular risk. You can successfully raise HDL many different ways, but the, all of these artificial ways of raise, raising HDL does not help you. Not only that, recently it was shown by a couple of different really good publications that the highest level of HDL actually increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, just like increased LDL does. Many different studies on vitamin and mineral supplementation show that Increasing supplementation increases the risk of disease. And the ones I want to warn you in particular about are calcium supplementation because it severely increases the risk of cardiovascular disease and iron. Iron increases the risk of many different kinds of diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and dementias. So these are the key longevity lessons that we learn from looking at these mind span elite diets. Low but sufficient iron is the most important thing that you can do today for your overall longevity. You're probably going to have to have a specific set of blood tests to know whether or not you have the right level of iron because it's different for everybody, especially since you each carry different genetic variants that will determine your overall iron levels. For very active people, like the Chimane or the Japanese traditionally, uh, you want a very, very high carb diet. And I don't, th th this graphic is a little bit misleading. You don't have to be a runner or lift weights to, uh, to have this kind of beneficial diet. Um, the Chimane and the Japanese just move a lot. They just, they're just very active. They're just not very sedentary. They don't stand around or sit around or watch TV a lot. They just do a lot of things. But if you're more sedentary, if you can't help but being sedentary, you might want to ratchet down the carbs a little bit. And more importantly, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, you definitely want to get the carb level down, but you don't want to replace it with just any other kind of food. Higher monounsaturated fat, like you get in olive oil, is probably the best way to replace those carbohydrates. But the really important thing about getting some carbohydrates is that you're feeding your good microbiome. You can't really uh, maintain good blood sugar levels and other beneficial aspects of your physiology without these microbiome, without the benefits of the microbiome. And again, low but sufficient protein is really important. High protein is associated with many different increased uh, disease risks. And so there's a lot more information about all these things in the MindSpan diet lots of scientific references to help you achieve the greatest longevity uh, that's possible for you. Thanks a lot uh, for your time and your attention. <clears throat>